Brian O'Driscoll on Off the Ball with Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us, everyone in. So the 2021 Heineken Champions Cup final between La Rochelle and Toulouse kicks off at 4.45 on Saturday evening at Twickenham. Ronan O'Gara leading La Rochelle into their first ever Champions Cup final against the Toulouse side bidding to win the trophy for a record fifth time. Three-time Champions Cup winner Brian O'Driscoll is with us. Evening, Brian. Good evening, Nathan. How are you? I'm all right. I'm just thinking if O'Gara walks away with this, you'll no longer be able to turn your nose up at his paltry two Heineken Cup titles. Very true, very true. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite, the, um, quite the start to his coaching t- uh, career, really. You know, it's still very much in its infancy and in what he's capable of achieving. And I'm sure he would have had aspirations to get to the knockout stages of Europe. But would he have thought at the start of the year that they were going to be European finalists, um, be sec- sitting second in the top 14 uh, league at the moment, right behind the... the uh, the, their finalists in um, in Toulouse, uh, Champions Cup finalists in Toulouse. So it's um, it's turning out currently to be a really great season for them. But when you get to the business end, you you come up against the best of oppositions, and they're going to have to really turn it on again, like they did against Leinster, if they're going to manage to contain this Toulouse team that you know on paper looks great, but yet they're really struggling for in a few positions from an injury point of view. So maybe it's a good time to get them. His coaching career is still in its infancy, as you say, but it, there's no doubt it's a still a massive moment. And I can't wait for a couple of weeks' time when he's reflecting on this week and, and what he's learned from this week. And he's so good at expressing what he picks up along the way. In this period, sort of 48 hours out, when you reflect on your career and the big games you play, Champions Cup finals, Grand Slam deciders, Lions tests, what did you want from your coach in that period and and did it differ between the various coaches that you had at different times as to what they would want to give the players in the 48 hours before a big game uh, yeah but I, I think you know the, the good coaches know that the the hard graft and the and the work um the the detailed work goes on in the early parts of the week um monday tuesday and, and in fact even before that even before you get to the final i'm sure there would have been a bit of focus on toulouse last week the knowledge that they were playing Agen, a team that hasn't that's that's almost pointless in the top 14, that's winless, and that they would have won at a canter with their thirds. So um, you would anticipate that maybe one of the days last week was given towards focusing towards Toulouse to make sure that they had a body of work under their belt before they came into this week. That's the way we would have operated under different coaches at different junctures throughout my career. Um, and then, you know, you come in um, with with something under your belt. It feels as though it's an easier week. There's less information to take on board. You have more clarity as to what you're trying to achieve on the Saturday evening. Um, and to be honest with you, a lot of it now is about time off feet rather than, you know, running moves on fields. They won't be plucking, you know, too many plays from obscurity, but they'll go to their playbook and they'll have analyzed Toulouse and identified where they feel, you know, some of their nuanced plays might be able to um, pull them apart. And there's no better man than John O'Gibbs in in coming up with plays, you know, particularly line out plays. And um, he's, you know, he he had a history for it in in Leinster. We've seen it subsequently in La Rochelle as well. So Rog will be adding his tuppence worth to that from from an attack point of view. Um, so yeah, I think w- when you're coming into the last into Thursday, Friday before a, a final. It's reinforcing those simple messages from early on in the week. The last thing you want to do is bombard your team with more information later on in the week. So simplicity, clear and concise messaging, um, and just trying to build confidence and and reaffirm their position that they're worthy finalists and they're there on merit. And why not them? Um, all this talk of you know you have to lose one to win mm. one, and you know you have to build you know your credibility in the competition to justify victory that goes out the window because they're in a final and um if they can deliver a better performance for 80 minutes they're going to be champions and and it comes down to that so form books go out the window even though those they are the top two and the top 14 and they are the informed teams in europe on the basis of their consistent performances this is a toss of a coin as to who is going to who's going to turn up to lose slight favorites because of their history because they're ahead of them in the top 14 but I really don't think there's a huge amount between these teams and 
he's just got to leave it to his senior players now to try and guide them in for uh, for the last 24 hours and um, and just you know be there for for any nerves that might be there. But well, it's just about reinforcing positivity. Yeah. Did Did you like or did you see coaches give the big rousing speech about? Um, the emotional tone and what it would mean to your family and to the supporters or did you like it just to be a calm factual based build up to the game more the latter I think the, the occasion takes care of itself in finals you don't need those rousing speeches you don't need people to reinforce how big it would be for you your family the supporters everybody at home um, people that need a pick up in, in their lives because of the you know the circumstances we found ourselves in over the last year no one no one needs to hear that because it's a final and the carrot is there. It's you know the hardest part is sometimes playing in a semi-final, um, but once you you get to experience the occasion in a final and you get a shot at um, at going um, to to do something that no one's done in their club's history um, in in La Rochelle. You know they've never won a top fourteen. They've won a Pro D two, obviously, um, but you know they've the best they've done previously is a is a quarter final. So none of the pressure is really on them. Of course there's expectation from their fans, but they're thrilled to be where they are. Um but the expectation is really all heaped on Toulouse to deliver. And you know they they're the ones that are now chasing the 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 first of these five titles now that Leinster are out of the tournament. So it's um it, it's really a great position for John O'Gibbs and for Ron O'Gara to be in because They'll just do more of what they've done all season and preparing their team the best they can against the opposition they come up against. This one just happens to be a final and the emotion will take care of itself. You know Gibbs very well as a coach and O'Gara as a player, but do they strike you personality-wise as perfect bedfellows on a coaching ticket? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I, I haven't gone there on a, you know, talking to Ron about relationships um, with John O. You'd have to anticipate that you know, it's it's not a, a perfect partnership. The fact that John O is going on to Claremont, that Raj is going and taking the head job in La Rochelle. Why would you move from um, from an environment that is clearly on the up, that is that is is proving to be successful? So, I don't know if there's if if everything is aligned between the two of them. I think that they've clearly got a huge respect for for you know each other's rugby knowledge, but. Anytime you look at the coaches' box, um, they don't seem to be conversing very often. Um, I did, looked up once and, and saw there was a bit of a heated argument going on, but there's no harm in that. So I, I just wonder, um, you know, uh, you, you success paints over any uh, over any cracks. So I guess we'll maybe we'll never know. But I just don't know if it's a perfectly cohesive partnership. Mm. Otherwise, they'd be both signing three-year extensions in the same club. As you say, success uh, papers over everything. But as players, if you're in a group, it, does it does it affect players? Do you look at your coaching ticket and want them to be on the same wavelength all the time? Or actually, is a bit of healthy debate a good thing? Or as coaches, do you need to keep that away from the players all the time? No, I think for the most part, you need to keep that away from the players. The last thing the team wants to see is a lack of clarity, um, of you know, split decisions, um, a lack of understanding specifically as to what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve. So I'd anticipate that both of them are, are very professional in that they, you know, whatever arguments or whatever disagreements they potentially have, and this is just me looking in from the outside, maybe I'm wrong on it, but um, you, you would anticipate that um, they've got a very healthy respect for one another from a knowledge point of view. John O'Gibbs brought Ronan O'Gara in as head coach under underneath him, so he knew the wealth of knowledge that he was bringing Obviously, he came with a great reputation from the success that he had in down in um, with the Crusaders, from building his IP with Racing previously. So he came in knowing what he was getting in from a from a coaching point of view. Um, I just I just guess I'm I, I'm just guessing that the fact that he's moving on and and Raj is taking his position, it it can't it can't be a perfect situation. Mm. Well, listen, they may end up victorious and it'll all work out just fine uh, come Saturday evening. It, the build-up is the new boys against the aristocrats. Is that fair, though, in terms of uh, the previews? Because Toulouse haven't won this in 11 years. And like you mentioned, John O'Gibbs has three of them. Raj has two Heineken Cup titles. Victor Vito's a World Cup winner. Will Skelton has won the Champions Cup with Saracens. There's no shortage of winning experience in that La Rochelle dressing room, just maybe not in a La Rochelle jersey. 
Um, yeah, like you know, they've won bigger tournaments than the European Cup. Mm. Um, as you say, World Cup winners, um, lots of um, lots of experience and success littered th throughout their team. Um, guys that have played on the big stage before, played in um, European finals, you know, been on the losing teams. The likes of Bryce uh, Brice Dulan has been there. Obviously, Skelton with um, with Saracens. Um, so you know, there's 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 not going to be any um, any shortage of confidence um, for the big occasion. Um, they've managed to deliver it on the semi-final level against hotly tipped favourites of uh, the tournament in Leinster, and they put them um, to the sword. You know, for certain parts of the game, um, showed a physical dominance that um, I, I guess we weren't anticipating. Um, so, you know, there's nothing that they should be fearful of with this Toulouse team. What I would say about Toulouse is that. They can play the game lots of different ways. You look at the the grunt that they possess up front with the Arnold brothers and that that front row of Famuina and Cyril Bai. They're going to miss Julian Marchand, obviously getting sent or getting um, suspended for a for a high tackle in the semi final. Um, but then you've got these magicians at half back, particularly in Dupont and Entomac, um, pulling the strings for their X factor out wide in Labelle and and Colby in particular. So. They, they they can they can really you know graft up front, but they they play a lot of KBA themselves, keeping the ball alive. But they um they they can be pragmatic and kick to the corners when necessary. But they also have beautiful sleight of hand. So I think they're they're probably the most complete team across Europe in the manner in which they can play conditions, raining, warm, freezing cold. Uh, we saw them in Ulster earlier on in the year up in Kingspan Stadium in a horrible night. Where they still scored four tries and I've got a bonus point victory, um, even not playing great. So um they are a massive, massive threat and and, and rightly so I think they are just favourites because of what they've done previously, because they've won the bouclier in in, in France um two years ago. They're technically still the reigning champions because it was abandoned last year. So they they've they've got achievements under their belt already and and obviously they've got the history and prestige of what Toulouse teams of the past have done and also the, there's the you know added excitement will it be the first father son combination to lift the um the european trophy uh with Emile back in was it 95 and and Roman managing to do it in uh, in two days time we'll have to wait and see so it's a as much as we're disappointed, well, I'm personally disappointed not to see my old team Leinster in, involved, and I'm sure lots of people in, in Ireland would love to see that. It, it's still a very keenly contested uh, final and, and one that should deliver.